Hello and welcome to our newscast. I'm Huang Jie, live from Seoul. We begin with President uh, Park Geun-hye's policy address to the National Assembly. In her speech, President Park announced that the government will begin the process of revising the constitution to change Korea's single-term presidency. And we go to our presidential office correspondent, Song Ji-san, at Tongade for the details. Ji-san, could you tell us more about the constitutional revision she brought up this morning? Good afternoon, Jihye. President Park has yet to put the revision into effect before her single five-year term ends, citing the outstanding difficulties she has experienced over the past three years and eight months she's been in office. She said the challenges facing Korea cannot be tackled with just a handful of policies or reforms and must be approached with the idea of taking the country to take another leap forward. <laughs> Tetongyong 장기적인 투자와 경영에 어려움을 느끼고 있습니다. President Park said that the single-term presidency can no longer serve the needs of a changing society and said now seemed the right time and place to answer the call from the public and the political realm to go ahead with the revision. Public polls indicate that 70 percent of Korean people agree with the idea of revising the constitution and nearly 200 lawmakers, or two-thirds of the total, are engaged in a parliamentary movement to proceed with a revision. 저는 오늘부터 개헌을 주장하는 국민과 국회의 요구를 국정 과제로 받아들이고 개헌을 위한 실무적인 준비를 해 나가겠습니다. 임기 내에 헌법 개정을 완수하기 위해 정부 내에 헌법 개정을 위한 조직을 설치해서 국민의 여망을 담은 개헌안을 마련하도록 하겠습니다. President Park also asked lawmakers to set up a special parliamentary committee and to gather public opinion on the issue and further develop and discuss the scope and content of the tasks ahead. Back to you in the studio. Thanks for that, Chisna. We appreciate it. And South Korea has confirmed that North Korea has been using its agencies dedicated to inter-Korean affairs to launch psychological warfare on the South. They've been attempting to stoke division and anger over issues such as defections and the upcoming deployment of a U.S. defense, U.S. missile defense system. Connie Kim reports. North Korea is focusing on psychological warfare against the South as its organizations in charge of South Korean affairs are operating teams to pump out the regime's propaganda. The South Korean government officials said Monday that the North's United Front Department and the military's reconnaissance general bureau are reposting rumors uploaded on South Korean portal sites to social networking services. The officials said the group focuses on hacking and agents stationed abroad spreading false information in South Korea. Recently, the agents are known to have uploaded rumors that the group of North Korean defectors working at a North Korean restaurant in China was kidnapped by the South. Moreover, these North Korean agents have been focusing on stirring up controversy within the South regarding the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system THAAD to the peninsula. The North's efforts come as North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered agencies in 2014 to come up with ways to use the Internet for propaganda promotion. North Korea has some 80 propaganda websites and about 160 websites abroad that praise the North. Experts say psychological warfare is effective for the North as it's cost-effective and hard to block. They add, however, that South Korea could respond by sending USBs north of the border to provide information to North Koreans. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Korean consumers are tightening their belts amid the protracted economic slump. Statistics Korea data shows that a fifth of households say their expenditures surpassed their disposable income in the second quarter. The 20 percent figure is the lowest since related data was collected for the first time in 2003. It also beats the previous record of 20.8 percent logged in the third quarter. 
uh, th last year. Household disposable income is the amount of money that a household can spend after taxes or welfare contributions. The record low figure comes largely due to concerns over weak economic growth, despite government-led measures to boost consumption. The government predicts the economy will grow 3% next year, while the central bank revised down its outlook to 2.8%. We are now about two weeks from the U.S. presidential election, and a new poll shows Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton has a double-digit lead over her Republican rival Donald Trump. The ABC News poll released on Sunday shows Clinton leading Trump by 12 percentage points, drawing 50 percent of the vote. Almost 70 percent said they were turned off by the sexual allegations against Trump, and some 60 percent disagreed with his assertion that the election is rigged. Rigged. The poll was conducted last weekend via telephone among a random national sample of fewer than 900 likely voters with a margin of error of plus or minus three and a half points. And that does it for now. Thanks for watching. Do join us again at 4 p.m. Korea time with Devin Whiting and goodbye for now.